Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. As you know, I have a Pashley Sovereign. I have recently got the lights up and running on that. I wasn't overly happy with the standard light bulb. Rather yellow light, um, not particularly bright, not particularly safe. So I decided to upgrade it to an LED. Um, I used a product from a company called Nice Light. Um, check them out, they do make some good products. They're not cheap. You can get generic eBay ones for about a third of the price, but they don't have a lens, it's just a bare LED on the, on the shell. It doesn't have a lens over it, so it's not spreading the light. The light just comes directly out. So you're not making full use of your reflector of your light. You might as well just have a bare bulb. Um, the nice light ones have a shaped lens, effectively, for want of a better description, over the actual LED. This spreads the light 180 degrees, making full use of your reflector. They are AC compliant, so you can use them straight with the electricity from the dyno hub. Um, now I tried this and got a little bit of flicker, as you'll see in the video. I wasn't overly fond of the flicker. Some people think it's a valuable safety feature. The flicker attracts attention. I don't like it myself, I've decided to have it as flicker free as possible so I then decided to make a bridge rectifier to create DC current rather than AC current and driving the bulb that way. Well, watch the video and you'll see how I got on. Thank you. Okay, let's see what the uh, incandescent bulb Okay. In the torn packaging, um, a super bright LED from Nice Light. Um, this is going on the Pashley, uh, the Pashley um, Sovereign. It's rated between two and a half to six volts, one watt, and over voltage protected. It will do AC or DC. So hopefully, I'll see how it manages with the flicker. I've been expecting LEDs when I fit them to flicker. The ordinary incandescent bulb that's in there at the moment is quite yellow when I spin the wheel by hand. I don't think I'm going to get to an over voltage situation but uh, if I do I'll sort that out with a regulator and if it flickers I'll sort that out with a rectifier. Okay there we have the LED bulb from Nice Light. Um, as you can see, hopefully see that against my hand, it's um, quite an unusual shape uh, but that should spread the light around to the reflector. So, once that focuses on the light, let's click that out of place. There we go. Um, very easy to do. Wiggle the old, um, the old bulb out. If you remember, the glass was uh, bigger than the hole, so I had to ream out the hole a bit. And line up that little notch in the top there you can see it with the notch in there that fits in nicely that should that stays in place that's in now to test the brightness here we go Yeah, quite a bit of flicker there. I might uh, see where it goes at normal riding speeds. Uh, I might have to put a rectifier in that to give it some DC voltage. Stop it from flickering. That's one job done. Well, I've taken the uh, headlamp off. That just fell out, but that would normally be um, in there. A bolt goes through, which attaches it to the metal bracket, which attaches it to the frame. Now the AC generator, the uh, the dyno hub, actually um, sends part of its electricity. It's, it's directly connected to the frame. Um, so if I were to just put a rectifier on this, um, it would effectively be short circuited because. The, um, the tip of the bulb is effectively shorted out to the frame. So you've got a mixture of AC and DC going on. It just won't work properly. So 
to isolate this basically the tip is connected to there you can see a washer there uh, I'll just try and zoom in a little bit now there was a brass bush going all the way through which when I try and split this open with one hand there as you see that was connected to the uh, the brass tip which shorted out through through the bracket and uh, to the frame so to isolate that I've took out that brass bush I'm going to put the bolt through with a little bit of heat shrink around the threads that are going to be in this part that will isolate that I've cut the wire short to leave me plenty of wire on the bike and I've got some red and black wire uh, which I'm going to solder into there and then I'll make a bridge rectifier circuit um, and a little uh, small capacitor you can use a huge capacitor which lights as a stand light um, but to have not got one and I can't be bothered ordering one so I'll just make a normal one and it can light up when I pedal hopefully without any flicker okay well I've done the soldering iron out and have my glasses reading glasses very difficult to see what I'm doing these days but uh, something that used to take for granted close vision has uh, has gone so I need glasses to see distance and glasses to see close just the way it is as you age things get worse so I've soldered in the wires in the appropriate places red is going to the tip of the lens black will be going to the uh, the outer of the of the uh, of the bulb sorry not the lens um, this will be insulated from the frame so I can crack on and make the rectifier well the bulb hole unit has now clipped back together as its red and black wires attached and it's this hole at the back that's where the switch goes it's not held in place very well it's just basically um, a very basic contact in there and that's held in place by the uh, the headlamp shell the gap at the back just held in place by its own uh, by its own gravity if you will um, it works it's effective um, cheap to manufacture I suppose well let's crack on Okay, I'm going to try and do this without um, kicking the tripod or something. I've got the camcorder balance, but a bridge rectifier basically if we have four diodes in that arrangement Coming out of here we'll have positive DC and ground and going in both these sides will be the AC coming from the hub generator. What I will also put on here will be a smoothing capacitor and then these will go to the headlight which in this instance happens to be an LED right looks simple enough doesn't it <laughs> Yeah, um, bridge rectifiers you can actually buy these in one package so one plastic package with four legs sticking out telling you which of the inputs which is plus or minus um, I've, I've got four diodes which I'm going to use the diodes I'm using have a low voltage drop they're germanium diodes or Schottky diodes um, they only have a voltage drop of 0.2 volts each so I will still get light hopefully um, non flickering light coming on from quite a low voltage so low revs of the front wheel um, if you've got a small wheel I say a 20 inch wheel with a hub generator um, you can probably get away with silicone diodes which have a much higher voltage drop um, they will drop about 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts um, each um, so if you've got a fast spinning wheel you don't want the voltage getting too high 
um, you will be doing more RPM at walking pace on the, on the wheel than I would on a 700c um, wheel so the voltage drop is less important in that case um, even at quite high speeds my revolutions um, the wheel will be you know fewer revolutions per mile than uh, than a, a small wheeled bicycle would so yeah hopefully my theory is sound hopefully it makes sense too what the um, rectifier does is, is well you've got a AC waveform that looks typically like that what it will do is rectify that effectively so what you will get is where that would normally come down here it inverts it but, well a bit of an oversimplification but uh, that's what it does so you get a lot less monster waveform and the smoothing capacitor will a bit more space got space underneath haven't we there we go each of these peaks will not get chance to drop as far so you get that sort of waveform so you get very low ripple um, the bigger the capacitor the lower that ripple will be um, of course you're physically constrained by size and the amount of space in the headlamp shell um, the best capacitors are big batteries or uh, or huge you know ones that look like a, a can of coke or something like that they work extremely well but in this uh, in this instance in this sort of installation um, practicalities have to come in so uh, I'll, I'll find something that fits and it will do the job um, perfectly well for what it's intended to do right science lesson over <laughs> Okay, the diodes themselves come like that. I'm not sure if you can make it out. I'm not sure I can try and zoom in a bit. Oops. Not sure if you can see there, but there's a silver line on this side which represents the uh, straight line. Where's me, uh, oh, where's me pen? So the silver line indicates this part, the uh, um, cathode, possibly. <laughs> Long time since I uh, worked in electronics, um, well, over 25 years. So uh, yeah, but that's that way around. So if you remember the diagram I did earlier, I've done a very literal translation of it. So I'm going to wrap this up in uh, in tape. It'll be firm enough once it's <coughs> excuse me once it's all soldered in place. There we go. These leads will be trimmed off afterwards. Need to solder those in place. Put a capacitor across there. Feed me AC in. Take me DC out. And um, yeah, then we should be up and running. Capacitors look like this um, two leads this is an electrolytic capacitor it is polarity dependent so the stripe on them usually goes to the negative in this case it does um, they are measured in farads this is a thousand microfarad so uh, basically a thousandth of a farad um, in that case um, it's rated at 16 volts um, make sure you use a higher rated voltage uh, than what you actually need then it's more than capable well within its uh, tolerance limit so that will go across the bridge rectifier once I get the soldering iron warmed up again okay that's done it's a bit rough and ready that's ready to go in the shell once uh, the switch is held in place and a little bit of fiddling and jiggery pokery to get it in place then I need to wrap this in gaffer tape or something just to insulate it these two wires oops, are where the AC wires will join doesn't matter which way around because it's AC and the rectifier will sort that out and give me hopefully smooth DC current 
to allow the LED bulb to um, work on a non-flickering basis. Um, I'll also put the insulated bolt, um, need to sort that out, so that's ready to, uh, to attach. But yeah, next stage, build up the light. Just show you the insulated bolt, Allen bolt, and you can either use gaffer tape, insulation tape. I've used heat shrink tubing, just um, yeah, got some got some heat on it and uh, shrunk it over the threads. That will insulate it completely when it uh, goes through there. Otherwise, I'm not sure if you can just about see with that little copper bit. I'll be able to see it better there. So that would um, otherwise short out on the frame and completely spoil me DC, I'll be back to AC again ok hopefully just to the top left of the shell there you can see where I've uh, tucked away, wrapped everything up the wires are joined uh, a little bit of heat shrink tubing over those stop them shorting out um, wrapped everything else, stop it shorting just a case of uh, attaching attaching the lens yeah. just be careful the bulb doesn't fall out there you are. that's in excellent Okay, let's uh, see how well that's worked. <laughs> Pretty well. That red is just the focusing beam from the uh, Tamcode reacting. I'll just put the light on. <laughs> it's still doing it. It's not a visible beam, but. Uh, <laughs> Picking it up from the camcorder, how strange. Yeah, very bright. Only the slightest of flickers if it's going at walking pace. But, oh, I had a reasonable pace as I did with the uh, other tests. That works very, very well. Well, that'll do, as they say. Let's have another look, just to remind us of the differences between those levels of light. Um, see what you think, see if you think it's worth the effort. You could give it a try yourself, or you could just try an LED on its own. Entirely up to you. Basic bulb, very yellow. Not brilliant. Here we have the LED on its own flashing a little bit, quite annoying. And here the rectified LED, which I do like. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe uh, if you haven't already, and please press like. Thank you.